Each of us appreciate the extraordinary example of Marilyn Carlson Nelson, who's being recognized for lifetime achievement for her board of directors work. Her reputation is well known in leadership circles and boardrooms around the globe. She joined Mayo Clinic's Board of Trustees in 2005 and serves now as chair of the board. And I'm deeply honored to work with, with her very closely in my current role. She brought her exceptional leadership skills guiding Mayo Clinic Board of Trustees. And she's emphasized three key uh, issues. The importance of being a multinational, of bringing a multinational perspective of being an advocate for people who are vulnerable, and the importance of collaboration around a common vision. Let's focus on her multinational perspective. Her international education and global business experience and dedication to civic affairs have taught Marilyn much about global issues and service to people. She's the epitome of female leaders throughout the world and the epitome of leaders in general being named by Forbes magazine as one of the most powerful women in the world. She possesses, more than anyone I know, the powerful combination of intelligence, heart, and authentic leadership. She's the author of the best-selling book, How We Lead Matters, Reflections on a Life in Leadership, an inspiring collection of wisdom about how to build a meaningful legacy one day, at a time, one day at a time. Second, she's a tireless advocate for people who are vulnerable. She demonstrates that leaders must take on meaningful roles outside of the boardroom. For example, under her leadership, Carlson was the first major North American travel company to take a stand in the fight against the sexual exploitation of children in the tourism industry by signing an international code of conduct in 2004, aimed at ending child prostitution, child pornography, and the trafficking of children. With the Queen of Sweden, Marilyn was a co-founder of the World Childhood Foundation, an organization dedicated to the protection of vulnerable street children around the world. The United Nations acknowledged Marilyn's anti-trafficking efforts by bestowing the Business Leaders Award in Luxor, Egypt in 2010. And in that same year, Carlson continued its commitment to human rights with the signing of the UN Global Compact. Just this year, at the White House, Marilyn accepted the first presidential award for extraordinary efforts to combat human trafficking from President Barack Obama. And finally, Marilyn is expert at guiding the Mayo Clinic Board of Trustees so that we have a common vision and our mission of serving patients remains crystal clear. Marilyn has the mantra of let's all work together and ensures that all board members voice their perspectives. She rotates committee assignments among members so that the board is active, effective, and strong. She has helped the Mayo Clinic Board of Trustees navigate the changing healthcare landscape. She's instrumental in guiding our thinking around our plans for Destination Medical Center in Rochester. Marilyn, thank you for all you've done for Mayo Clinic, our patients, our state, nation, and the world. Your accomplishments are extraordinary. A final thought. Marilyn provides the proof that one person can truly make her mark on the world. And the world is a better place because of Marilyn's actions. Please join me in applause as we celebrate Marilyn Carlson Nelson as the recipient of tonight's Lifetime Achievement Award for Board of Director Service. Told to give Marilyn a handshake. I, th I, I think she's a hugger. I said. <laughs> There's the handshake. <laughs> Thank you, Don. We have a mutual admiration society. It's clear. This is really um, a very high honor, and I'm delighted to be here with so many distinguished guests and 
so many long-time, long-time dear friends. Um, for those of you, I have to tell you a little secret. For those of you who know my husband, you know he has a kind of twinkle in his eye and he really likes a good joke. And in 2004, he won this award. And one of those huge posters with his picture, he sent someone down the next day to get it and he put it so every day, going to my car for the last nine years, I have looked at this lifetime picture of Glenn Nelson as the director. And now, a little competition after 52 years is okay, right? <laughs> so now I'm going to take that one up. It's going to go. <laughs> But um, very seriously, both of us, and I think all of us in this room, appreciate really what governance is. My dad had a real simple way of saying it. He said, it's nose in, fingers out. NIFO, he said. We got the NIFO approach. Nose in, fingers out. I have to say that I pause, though, um, getting a Lifetime Achievement Award. I, I was hoping, John, that you would say, that you've got the answer so that this could be a halfway mark. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe it will be. But it does, without question, provoke a lot of introspection. As I look back over my really many, many years of board service, I'm struck always by the quality of the leaders with whom I've had the privilege to serve the experiences that I've gained and how often the experiences in one field actually give you that kind of instruction that helps you to see your own operation with new eyes and it's applicable so often from things that you thought were, were less relevant that become extraordinarily relevant as you're faced with new problems yourself. I've made lifelong friendships and ultimately and most importantly the contributions that these boards have made to responsible governance for some very successful and long-lived companies is really important and gratifying. In short, I'm so glad that I said yes. Many times, not knowing where the energy was going to come from or where the time was going to come from. And you all know that situation. But the truth is that when you say yes, it gives you energy and it makes the journey worth taking. My first yes to board service came when I was only 35. It was the early 70s, not too long after the civil rights for women had been carved into law, when Harry Holtz, maybe some of you in this room might remember him, he was the CEO of the first trust company in St. Paul, and he took the bold step of inviting a woman onto his board. Not too long thereafter, he invited a second woman who happened to be Luella Goldberg, my life, lifelong close, close friend. In Harry's mind, it was my economics degree, which was a rarity for women in those days, coupled with my prior work as the security analyst at Payne Weber that overcame my youthful age. It was absolutely an exhilarating time for me but sometimes I was a little off-put when inevitably all the heads would turn to me and the chairman would say, oh yes, and Marilyn, what do the women think about that? <laughs> as, if, as if I could speak for Hillary Clinton and Michelle Bachman all at the same time. <laughs> so the changes in the governance over these years has been stunning and John has referenced that. In the 70s, the board's primary raison d'etre was to hire and fire the CEO. Boards reflected the dominant culture, you know what that was, with minimal diversity, and there was always, at the beginning, actually a preponderance of inside directors, and the focus was mainly on short-term shareholder returns. Words like transparency had not become part of our vocabulary. For many years, the corporation was actually separated from its giving strategy. Today, today the wonderful news is that the corporation is responding much more expansively to its license to operate, 
which we must never forget is ultimately granted by society. And as such, we now see philanthropic investments strongly aligned in corporate strategy. We see pharmaceuticals fighting infectious diseases. We see Coca-Cola and Pepsi taking on child obesity. We see General Mills nourishing the world in impoverished countries. And as you heard before, I'm so proud to say, Carlson combating the sexual exploitation of children in travel and tourism, and then moving on to do so in Minnesota and around the world. What is so exciting to me about all these efforts is that they're actually creating loyalty among customers, among employees, among shareholders and suppliers, while improving sustainability and developing new markets. And it makes being a director so much more rewarding and so much more exciting. In recent years, saying yes to board service inspired, inspired my admiration in many ways to really know what is possible. As the board chair of Mayo Clinic, I have witnessed the most powerful combination of all human endeavors, science, compassion, efficiency, and effectiveness all with focus on something as clear and simple as doing the best for every patient, every hour of every day. I have observed Dr. John Noseworthy, a servant leader whose commitment is unrelenting to Mayo's mission to, quote, inspire hope and contribute to health and well-being through integrated clinical education and research. Also, I can't stand here with someone whom I love so deeply sitting right there to be honored tonight, Trudy Radio. Trudy is the CEO of Carlson. She is managing our brands not only to deliver high quality with an, but with an ethical culture. And she holds up business itself to be a higher calling. Maybe we wouldn't be here tonight if we didn't know in our hearts that business is a high calling and that if Rusty and Bert hadn't reminded us so many years ago that coming together to honor business and that calling is important and worthy. If I am ever prone to discouragement, I know that all I have to do is show up at the appointed time, at the appointed place, which is the Carlson School of Business at the University of Minnesota, where I co-teach a class of students about corporate responsibility. From what I'm seeing in that classroom, our emerging business leaders are excited to expand and respond to the local and global expectations of business. They are gaining the knowledge to create jobs, deliver shareholder value, meet needs, innovate, but in addition, they are committed to strengthening democracies and our world's well-being. These millennials do not want to commit to a career in anything less than an ethical environment. And I can assure you that they are on it. So yes, we have journeyed so far since my very first board experience. Today there's a commitment to be true stewards of all that we have been entrusted with to fully appreciate in our hearts and souls our individual ability to impact locally and globally, for each of us to be a testament to democracy, to stabilize our world for our children and our grandchildren. All this has never been more possible, but never been more urgent. If a lifetime award means anything, it means I have a platform and the obligation to call on all of you. You who are to follow. You who are today's generation. You are our hope to carry on whatever your platform, to see your role in the greatest possible context. What a privilege it has been to serve. What a journey it has been. 
anyone who knows me very well knows that I love poetry. And there's a, a Greek poet, Kavafi, who talks about our journey. It goes like this. When you start on your journey to Ithaca, then pray that the road is long, that the summer mornings are many, filled with ports, seen for the first time, with so much pleasure and so much joy. Always keep Ithaca in your mind. To arrive there is your ultimate goal. But let it last for long years, and then anchor for a while at the aisle when you are old, rich with all you have gathered along the way. But do not expect riches from Ithaca. It is she who has given you the journey. Without her, you would not have traveled at all. <laughs>